Okay, how do you actually use metadata? We've got a folder on our server that we keep our job sheets in so that uh, when we go out to do a job for a client, it's got the details on there of what needs to be done and the resolution to it and all those sorts of things. And we keep it in a central place on the server so it's accessible to uh, all those that need to get through to those files, whether they're in the office or out in the field with the customers. So we've got that set up using metadata in ways that make sense to us because uh, yeah, it's one, we're the ones that use it, so we tailor it to uh, what we need to do. Uh, I'll just show you how we went through and set that up for us, and you use the same principles for when you set up your own systems. So over on this screen here, we have the standard SharePoint view, and we can see the limited metadata which is on there, the standard stuff, so the name of the file, when it was modified, and who modified it. And if you look here, you'll see that we can add a column. Well, I've actually already been through and sorted all of this out. If I go through to change it to the job status view, you can see there are a lot of other columns which have automatically appeared. We still have the modified date and the person's modified by, but you see these columns here, we now have a column for the client, the status of the job, when the job was completed, whether or not it's been invoiced, and if an invoice task has been created. So that makes it immediately a lot more useful. You might notice from the uh, rather imaginative names, job sheet number 654 and so on, that these are not real data, but it serves to uh, show the purpose on there. You also notice this one here, the job status is unconfirmed. So if we want to change that, we go down to that area there, find that status field there, click on there, and we know that's in progress, so it will update it like that, and you see over there that's changed. And that's how we manage to keep track of uh, everything that we need to keep track of. We can also sort them in different ways. So if I want to know which jobs are completed, I can go down through there, filter on a particular field, and the job complete one is there, apply, and soon, you see we only have those which are completed. If I decide we've done enough with that, I can go back and change the uh, filtering, and this time I want to see those that we still have to do some work on. So I'll apply that, and there's just that one job which has to be done. And this is the beauty of uh, metadata, so we have so many different ways that we can organise it. So we will just go back and uh, clear all of them and bring them all in together again. Uh, let's say now we want to do some sorting. We'll just sort that in alphabetical order and we can line all of our clients up in one hit and we can look at them and see what's required. If I look over here, I can see these jobs have been completed, but the first job for um, Sam has been invoiced but not the job for Sandy. So that's something we can look at and we can move into. So just before you say, I've got to get me some of that, we need to stop and have a look at where and how metadata works. So as we talked about previously, metadata is information about the data. So if you have all these files in your system somewhere, wherever that might happen to be, the metadata tells you stuff about those files. So as we mentioned before, metadata could be things like the date it was made, who wrote, etc. So when you look at these sorts of things, which is where the metadata is, these are really ways to categorise the information that you have. Spelt with a Z to make the Americans happy. So when you want to know how to use metadata, what you need to do is to look at your data and say, what questions am I asking when I want to find this metadata? So in the case of the job sheets that we had through there, some of the questions we were asking was, uh, which client? What's the status of it? Is, it, uh, is the job finished or is the job in progress? And you look 
at your own set of data. You say, what questions am I asking when I want to get information out of there? And that's how you figure out what the metadata is that you need to add and layer over your own information. And that's the hard bit, working out what works. So you want to make some new columns on this and put some new metadata in there. First thing that we'll do in this case is actually change the view. I'll give it a different type on there. So what do we call this one? So to done it. Make it whichever way we want to do. So we have this new view up there, because I don't want to uh, change the old one. And now I go in and add some columns on there. And I'll just make this first one a single line of text and I'll call it the tech. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Okay, we've created that uh, new metadata columns. Next thing to do is to display it. So we go through and we edit the current view. Quickly down here and we find that uh, column. Tick the box, say OK. And there it is. So that's one of the easiest ways to customise the metadata in there. And of course we could take out any of those that we don't want just to tidy that view up and make it exactly the way that we want to see it. Well, after all that, just one final word of warning. Metadata can get complex very quickly if you don't control it. So make sure that you keep yourself organised or you can just talk to uh, people like us to get some extra assistance in managing it. There is lots of things that you can do with metadata, which means it is so flexible, which in turn means it can get away from you if you do not control it. So catch it.